According to North African theologian Tertullian, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. A statement that rings especially true for the Northern African Christians of the Sudan, for which we pray in the Anglican cycle of prayer when we pray for the province of the Episcopal Church of South Sudan. Although Coptic Christians of Egypt introduced Christianity to the Sudan back in the second century, it was in 1899 when the first Anglican missionaries from the Church Missionary Society established the Episcopal Church of Sudan in Omdurman. Among them was a Welsh missionary named Llewellyn Henry Gwynn, after whom Bishop Gwynn's School of Theology is named, a theological training college located in Juba, South Sudan. The first successful missionary among the Dinka was Archibald Shaw, who in 1906 settled in Malek and who shared in the Dinka nomadic life for more than three decades. Shaw became known as the founder of Dinka Anglicanism, and his adopted son Daniel Deng Otong became the first Sudanese priest in 1943 and then later bishop in 1955. When Sudan gained independence from the British and Egyptian colonizers in 1956, the first Sudanese civil war between the north and south erupted and did not end until 1972. The Diocese of Sudan remained part of the Anglican Church of Jerusalem and the Middle East until 1974 when the church reverted to the jurisdiction of the Archbishop of Canterbury. In 1976, the province of the Episcopal Church of Sudan was established. In 1983, the government of Sudan was seized by Islamic fundamentalists who declared Sharia law, requiring all Sudanese to convert to Islam on pain of death. On May 16th, a small group of Anglican and Roman Catholic chiefs in southern Sudan, together with their bishops, clergy, and laity, declared that they, quote, would not abandon God as they knew him. A bold declaration that set off the Second Sudanese Civil War. In 2005, a comprehensive peace agreement was signed, but not until after two and a half million Sudanese people had been killed, most of whom were Christian, and were killed because they were Christian. By the end of the Civil War, two-thirds of the six million people of southern Sudan were internally displaced, and another million were in exile throughout Africa and the rest of the world, including the bishops of most of the dioceses of the Episcopal Church of Sudan. In 2011, South Sudan gained independence from the Republic of Sudan, and in 2017, the province of the Episcopal Church of South Sudan was formed. In 1983, Christians in South Sudan were estimated to be only 5% of the population, but today have grown to nearly 90%, thus affirming Tertullian's teaching on the blood of the martyrs being the seed of the church. In the words of their bishops, the Sudanese Christians live only on the mercy of God. Whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. We have had nothing else but the grace of God and his guidance. Today, the ministry of the province is primarily carried out by native leaders and native missionaries, and the result, according to Bishop Abraham Yel Nihal, is an indigenous church. The Anglican Christians in Sudan have endured tremendous persecution, extreme poverty, disease, displacement, and devastating civil wars, and yet they continue to grow and find indomitable strength in their faith. In Christianity and Catastrophe in South Sudan, Civil War, Migration, and the Rise of Dinka Anglicanism, American missionary Jesse Zink explores the ways Christianity has provided powerful resources for a society facing crisis. Zink focuses particularly on the roles of young people and women in Dinka Anglicanism, and the province of the Episcopal Church of South Sudan is one of the few members of the Global Anglican Future Conference that ordains women. In January 2018, Archbishop Daniel Dang Bull consecrated Elizabeth Awut Ngor to serve as assistant bishop in the Diocese of Rumbek, a consecration that remains controversial among the provinces of Gafcon. May we keep all this in mind as we hold the Episcopal Church of South Sudan in our hearts. And let us pray. O God, steadfast in the midst of persecution, by your providence the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. As the martyrs of the Sudan refused to abandon Christ even in the face of torture and death, and so by their sacrifice brought forth a plentiful harvest, may we too be steadfast in our faith in Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen.